The news at noon starts right now. And developing this noon, the CDC confirms one of the people quarantined at Joint Base San Antonio tested positive for the coronavirus. This is the 15th case of the coronavirus in the United States. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg reminding people that the risk to the public is still low. Jesse Diego Yada was at this morning's announcement and she has more details about the patient's diagnosis. Jesse? Well, twice daily temperature checks indicated that the evacuee at JBSA Lackland had a fever late yesterday. So he was, but that person, unknown whether it was a man or a woman, that person was able to walk to a specially designated ambulance with an EMT infectious disease response team in protective gear. That person then taken to a hospital that is yet to be named. Now, Mayor Ron Nirenberg was the first to offer his assurances to the people of San Antonio. Every precaution has been executed according to plan to keep the individual isolated from the general public. San Antonians should feel confident and continue to go about their lives. Well, they were quick to point out that the response team, as you heard, worked perfectly. But given that there are still seven days left in the quarantine, the CDC says it's possible, possible, the first confirmed case among the evacuees here won't be the only one. There may be additional cases that we identify. I do want to prepare you for that. Um, we're still within the potential incubation period for coronavirus for people coming out of Wuhan in, um, city in China. Now, main, mind you, the evacuees are in a hotel on base that is fenced off and under guard. And although the risk is considered, again, very low to the public, coming up at 1230, we'll talk about some precautions that you can take that can help protect you against illness, including the coronavirus. We're live outside municipal chambers. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jesse. Right now on KSAT.com, we're following the latest developments as coronavirus concerns grow. Read more about the CDC's announcement, plus details about the disease. You can find it all on the coronavirus section of our website. A CVS pharmacy in Cipolo having to clean up this morning after burglars attempted to steal an ATM by driving straight through the front doors. This happening around 530 this morning at the CVS on Main Street and Cipolo Valley Drive. Cipolo police shared the surveillance video with us of the suspects attempting to steal the machine. Watch this, a driver of a dark colored Toyota Tundra truck backs into the front of the Cibolo CVS, smashing through all the glass doors. Then you see two individuals run through the doors. What you don't see is that they are wrapping a chain around the store's ATM machine. You see one of the suspects run out of the store, then the second holding the chain, realizing it's not going to reach the truck. That's when the suspects drive off. This all happening at a CVS pharmacy in Cibolo on Main Street at 5.30 Thursday morning. Cibolo police officer Matt Schema says these kinds of acts can be inspired by movies, but tend to be unsuccessful like the suspects seen in the video. I mean, a lot of crime is glorified through TV and they see how quick and easy it is and how rich they can get real quick. But in real life, that's not how it works because there are consequences for this. About three hours after that break in, crews have already cleaned up most of that damage and the store is now open for customers. Cibolo police are working with other agencies to determine if this break in is related to other break ins involving a similar truck that occurred overnight in surrounding areas. If the suspects are arrested, Cibolo police say they will face attempted burglary charges. A man accused of killing a San Antonio Independent School District teacher now facing charges. Police arrested 25 year old David Don Juan last night. They tell us he's charged with murder and aggravated assault of a deadly weapon. Amy Sebron was shot on February 1st at the park at Wall Street Apartments in the 11,000 block of Wall Street near Vance Jackson and Havener. That's on the west side. Police say Don Juan knocked on the teacher's apartment door and then shot her and a man in the apartment. Police tracked down Don Juan using surveillance video. Officers tell us cell phone records put Don Juan at the apartment the day of the victim was shot. In the day ahead, we're set to learn more about the future of Pre-K for SA program. Today, City Council is expected to vote to decide if a sales tax should be on the ballot in May. That tax will help fund the program. It was approved back in 2012 and expires next year. According to the Bear Facts KSAT, KSAT Rivard report poll, more than two thirds of people said they supported extending the tax.
making higher education more accessible. That's the goal of a new partnership between the Alamo Colleges District and an online university. The Alamo Colleges District and Western Governors University announced the partnership this morning. The schools are hoping the streamline process for Alamo Colleges and students and graduates who want to pursue a bachelor's degree at WGU Texas will help get that degree. Alamo College's graduates, staff, and faculty can choose from over 60 programs at WGU. Over the last three years, we've transferred close to 800 students to pursue their baccalaureate degree or credential, and so we'd like to ensure that we um, continue to do that and, in fact, transfer more students um, after today's signing. As part of the program, transfer students can get a 5% discount on their tuition at WGU. Still to come this half hour, a couple of Houston Astro players apologizing for cheating back in 2017 when they won the World Series. Larry Ramirez with that coming up in a few minutes in sports. And parts of the country are getting a blast of wintry weather. A look at the hardest hit areas and where the storm is headed now. You think it was cold here? Cold temperatures return to the Midwest and Northeast this week as an Arctic cold front blows through, bringing possible snow and wind chill alerts. Alex, ABC's Alex Bettis is in Chicago with the details. From the plains all the way to the East Coast, this storm is creating problems along the way, making it nearly impossible to get around in some areas. Now, parts of the Midwest coping with blizzard-like conditions as snow cascading across roads in South Dakota. In North Dakota, treacherous, blinding driving conditions. In Minnesota, even making out the warning signs are proving difficult with the poor visibility. Frightening situation in Kansas after this school bus out on a field trip flipped on its side. 17 fifth graders on board. Thankfully, no one injured. Now, down in the south, it's heavy rain and strong winds. In Alabama, 70 mile per hour gusts damaging several structures. And while the snow may be tapering off, we are not in the clear just yet. Some areas are now bracing for some of the coldest temperatures we've seen all season. Alex Perez, ABC News, Chicago. Yeah, that doesn't pales in comparison to what we got here. You know, I was. Or, no, we pale in comparison to what they have there. Let me get that right. That's right. Yeah. That's right, right? Yeah. We pale in comparison. We know I mean, you. what do you even do when it's that cold? I had three jackets on this morning and a hat. And three? it was like in. Yes. Three? It's impressive, actually. Sweater, another sweater, and then on uh, my outside layer. It was cold this but morning. Look at that poor guy. He was out there in the snow. Oh, bless his heart. Sorry, Justin. No, you're good. <laughs> It was cold where he was. Not so bad here. We've got those temperatures starting to warm up now. We're in the 50s in a lot of spots. The aquifer continuing to rise after our good rainfall yesterday and on Tuesday. It's up to 673.2. In your pollen count, it's just mold Mount Cedar. Both are low, so no big issues. We're going to talk about some warmer temperatures on the way and some more rain chances down the line. That's coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. This KSAT Rodeo Remembers is powered by the all-new 2020 Chevy Silverado HD. Welcome to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Are you ready to have a good time tonight? Everybody feel, oh, I love it. For 28 years, Hadley Barrett was the voice of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Sadly, his ride came to an end in 2017 at the age of 87, but his legacy lives on. Hadley's rodeo career began in the early 50s as a bareback rider and bull rider, but he wasn't neglecting his voice. His band, Hadley Barrett and the Westerners, filled dance floors from Nebraska to Kansas. So in 1960, when his friend was too sick to host a rodeo, he called on Hadley to fill in, and a new career began. In the following decades, his golden voice captured the action at rodeos across the country. By paying attention to the details, the cowboys and the fans, he became a rodeo legend in his own right. Hadley may be gone, but he has a strong tie to the new voices of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. His son-in-law, Randy Corley, has taken over hosting duties with his friend, Wayne Brooks. 
Well, long before travelers take flight from the San Antonio airport each day, other people are preparing to give them a lift. They whip up breakfast foods to give passengers that morning boost. Katrina Weber's recently spent some time inside the kitchen of one airport terminal food vendor while you were sleeping. A quick glance around tells you it's well past bedtime for San Antonio's airport. Throughout the terminals, there's barely a sound to be heard. Uh, of course, the oven keeps a little bit of the smell going and the vents open. Other senses, though, are wide awake thanks to the aroma wafting from this kitchen. At an hour while many people are asleep. I said a lot to do, not too much time to do it. A lot is brewing at Auntie Anne's. Much at the hands of a man named Joseph Talamantes. It's normal every day someone's here making the biscuits, making some Cinnabons and uh, getting everything prepped to open up at 3.45. To make sure they're ready for early travelers, the shift manager and a handful of workers arrive in the middle of the night. Just cut. In the place known for pretzels, they put a different twist on the morning menu. Mounds of dough become the basis of breakfast sandwiches. And then these will just rest on top of the oven for about 15, 20 minutes. And the staple of sweet snacks. At this hour, they usually have the kitchen all to themselves. No one's in the way. You just you're working at your own pace, moving around. As I said, that's usually. This time, with his insistence, I also dug into the dough. Working this shift isn't exactly easy, but Talamanta says he manages to roll with it thanks to a recipe of his own. Just a good night's rest. I, I usually go to bed around 4. I wake up around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So by the time I come in, I'm wide awake. He gets a jump start on his workday while it's still night to help travelers fill up and get on their way. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Mm, mm, mm. I want Cinnabon. I like how he said that it's easy because there's nobody around. Yeah. <laughs> you can get your work done. Uh, that's true. As a morning show person. Yeah. I love it when the station is nice and quiet. Calm before the storm, you really get work done. And Katrina right. looked like she was doing pretty good rolling she, that dough out did. there, huh? Yeah. You know, and those are morning show, uh, that's morning food. Mm -hmm. But I'll eat cinnamon rolls oh. anytime. Anytime. Extra frosting. Yeah. Can you classify that as morning food? I mean, they do, but no, I don't think so. It's any time of day. <laughs> anytime. Anytime. <laughs> Uh, the rainfall did a lot of good for us, guys. Uh, we saw the aquifer rise. We're still rising. We're up eight tenths of a foot since Monday. So we're at 673.2. This is a good development here, considering we are still in drought. Here's the drought monitor. We got this in this morning. And really, it remains unchanged from last week. Uh, it's just not a whole lot here. We keep getting these uh, waves of rain that sort of just keep things at bay. It doesn't really help us all that much. Uh, and it doesn't hurt us. Obviously, it doesn't hurt us to, to, to get the rain, but we've just sort of stayed steady here at 33 percent. Now, this does not take into account Tuesday's rainfall, so we may see some improvement when this is released next Thursday. It just hasn't been enough rainfall to really eat into that drought, at least so far. Outside right now, we've got blue skies at the airport. Well, we're not getting a report. I just noticed that it says 50 there on your screen. We're probably in the mid 50s, but for whatever reason, data is not coming in right now. So. Uh, the other sites showing mid 50s here in Bear County. We did have some clouds off to the north and east. Those are now retreating, so we're going to be good here. We're going to see sunny skies the rest of the afternoon. Should turn out to be really, really nice. Underneath some of those clouds, it is cooler. 48 degrees in Austin, but 53 Gonzalez, 55 Kennedy, 60 in Catula already. And then we've got mid 50s, as I mentioned here in Bear County. Support SA reporting 55. 54 at Randolph, and we should get up to right around 60 degrees this afternoon. Now, one thing we are dealing with are some gusty winds out of the north. It made it feel quite a bit cooler this morning. We had a wind chill for a time. Uh, we've got wind gusts up around 20 miles per hour here in town, gusting to 22 miles per hour in New Braunfels and Gonzales. And the wind gusts, I think they should be right there, 15, 20 miles per hour. We may even see some wind gusts tonight. We've got a weak frontal battery that'll be working through. Doesn't do a whole lot for our temperatures. We'll still be up around 60 tomorrow. Uh, but you can see that uh, expanse of clouds there, lining up from Abilene over to Dallas, back down towards Austin. Those are finally starting to erode a little bit. We just haven't had to deal with those. We've had full sun, and that's in the wake of the storm system that brought us the good rains. That's now up across uh, New England and the Northeast, some snow on the back side of it. Big story, though, have been the thunderstorms, and you saw some of the damage earlier there across the Southeast. Still some severe thunderstorm warnings out ahead of this line up and down the uh, Carolinas, back down towards Georgia. 
Okay, here's what we have to look forward to. Pretty good weekend. We're going to see more moisture Saturday and Sunday, and then we'll be watching our next cold front. So 60s on Saturday, uh, even warmer Sunday, probably some 70s. And then Monday, our warmest day, we're going to be up around 80 degrees, but our next front comes in, it looks like Tuesday, sometime during the day on Tuesday, and that knocks those temperatures back down. We could be looking at highs in the 40s and 50s by Wednesday with some rain back in the forecast. We're not done with winter just yet. But we will get a couple of really nice days here. 60 degrees this afternoon, breezy, sunny, northerly winds 5 to 15. And then uh, 60 tomorrow for Valentine's Day, 66 on Saturday, 75 Sunday. We'll get a few more clouds over the weekend, but we're really not looking for rain at this point, even President's Day. Uh, just mostly cloudy and up near 80. There's that front right now. It looks like it will knock down temperatures potentially down to 52 by Wednesday with a 30% chance of showers. It's very romantic weather for tomorrow. Yes, it is. <laughs> hope all of you got your ladies something. Nope. Yeah, yes. Yes, yes. good. You're on air. This is on record. <laughs> I know. We're moving on to the Astros. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, interesting that they open up spring training and send two guys out to basically read a statement of apology. And last month when the Astros spoke during Fan Fest, they sounded a little bit defiant. Today, the players actually sounded like they meant they're sorry. Now, as far as Astros owner, Jim Crane, well, he apologized, but he's certainly not taking any blame himself. Coming up. I am really sorry about the choices that were made by my team, by the organization, and by me. Alex Bregman and the Houston Astros are apologizing for sign stealing in big board sports. Your 2017 World Series champion Houston Astros are starting to gather in West Palm Beach, Florida for the start of spring training. Yesterday, pitchers and catchers officially reported. Position players have until Sunday with full squad workouts beginning on Monday. But before the first pitch is thrown and the first at bat is taken, the Astros have some explaining to do and some sorries to say for their sign stealing scheme in 2017, which led to the firing of manager A.J. Hinch and general manager Jeff Lunau. Astros owner Jim Crane told the media last month Month that he would address the team at spring training and then face the media. And he did. Crane apologized this morning and then threw Hinch and Lunau under the bus. Last month when MLB announced the penalties to the Houston Astros, I issued an apology to our fans and the city of Houston. I want to say again how sorry our team is for what happened. MLB also acknowledged that the players should not be punished for the failure of our leadership. The leaders enabled, condoned, and did not stop those actions that happened. I also agree that our players should not be punished for these actions. These are a great group of guys who did not receive proper guidance from their leaders. Crane added this will never happen again under his watch. In 2017, the Astros beat the Dodgers in seven games to win the World Series. That title is now tainted. Major League Baseball found the Strohs to have used a live camera in center field and dug out monitors to steal signs in real time and relay those signs to the batter during the season. Here's Bregman and Altuve this morning apologizing in brief statements. I am really sorry about the choices that were made by my team, by the organization, and by me. I have learned from this, and I hope to regain the trust of baseball fans. I would also like to thank the Astros fans for all of their support. I also will be brief. We had a great uh, team meeting last night, and I want to say that the whole Astros organization and the team uh, feel bad about what happened in, in 2017. <clears throat> we especially feel remorse for the impact in our fans and the gain of baseball. Altuve also said the team is determined to win the World Series in 2020.
Right. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not all that impressed. No. It's nice that they stood there, but I think they should have taken some questions and at least spent more time talking about them. I mean, the fans have been taking this on the chin for these guys. Well, they will be I made mean, available in the locker room today as well, so I think that's when yeah, the guys uh, will start taking some questions. Start, they need to start answering some questions. It's yep. hard to watch. Reading a statement. All right, Larry, thanks. <laughs> you got it. You tell Hey, when it comes to good health, a city in California scored above the rest, where San Antonio landed on the list of healthiest cities. It's widely believed that antioxidants found in fruits and veggies can provide several health benefits. Now a study says one antioxidant could help those at risk of developing Alzheimer's dementia. And coming up new today at 5, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety tested more than 200 new vehicle models to see which are rated best for safety. One technology they focused on, emergency braking systems. Which cars were rated best? That's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Around the world, over 60,000 cases of the coronavirus have been confirmed. Now there's a case right here in San Antonio. That patient is part of a group of people that are under quarantine at Joint Base San Antonio. And this means there are now 15 confirmed cases of that disease in the U.S. The CDC confirmed this latest case just this morning and tells us the patient is being treated in isolation. Jesse Degollado is live with more. Jesse. Well, being that the coronavirus, now called COVID-19, is a virus, the CDC says there is no effective antiviral medication. But now that certainly, as you say, San Antonio has its first confirmed case among those 91 evacuees at JBSA Lackland, and even though the exposure to the public is considered very low, here's what you can do to try to protect your health. It's a virus that's similar. It's in a family with many other viruses. And the kind of things that we've been telling you all to do all along to protect yourself against the flu are exactly the kind of things that will work in this circumstance. Local, state, and federal health officials all offered reassurances the response plan that was in place worked as it should. Now, if in the event that there is another case among those evacuees that were flown here, the council member representing District 4, where Lackland is located, also spoke to her constituents. We are confident that our military members are taking every precaution to be careful and make sure that nothing uh, disturbs our community and the health of our community. Council member also says that her office has been getting calls from people who are her, her constituents, some of her constituents who say they're worried and even frightened. But she says she's gotten other calls from constituents who are concerned about the welfare of those evacuees. How are they doing? Are they being treated respectfully? And that, she says, speaks to how compassionate the city of San Antonio is, even under these circumstances. We're live outside City Council Chambers, Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Thank you for that update, Jesse. As concerns over the coronavirus continue, the virus could also impact Fiesta and the tradition of collecting the Fiesta medals. Monarch Trophy Studio, where most of the Fiesta medals are designed, say the majority of the medals used are actually made in China, where some of the factories have remained closed due to the virus. And according to Monarch Trophy Studio, the owner there, Charlie Drago, tells us that that would mean Fiesta may have fewer medals this year. And right now on KSAT.com, we have all the information you need to know about the coronavirus, from explaining the virus to a timeline of how it has spread. You can find the latest on our website. Just search for coronavirus. Outside with live cam, 50 degrees, absolutely gorgeous day today. This is what February is supposed to feel like. A little chill in the air. A little chilly, but the sun's out. No snow. No clouds in the sky. Well, there's, a, there's a few people that wished for a little bit of snow this year. You know, we did get a couple of snowflakes, Sorry. so that is good. Uh, but yeah, it's beautiful right now. We've got uh, we've got clear skies out there. It is really nice. If you're heading out to the rodeo today, it's a good day for it. Uh, we'll see temperatures uh, eventually get up close to 60 this afternoon, but sunny skies across the board, even going into this evening. It will get chilly, though, once that sun goes down. Uh, you probably want to cope if you're heading out there late tonight. Uh, meantime, the uh, wind gusts are there. 16 mile per hour wind gusts in Pleasanton. Winds now gusting to 22 in New Braunfels, so that gusty wind kind of adds to the chill a little bit. We don't really have a 
technically a wind chill right now here in San Antonio. But uh, once the sun goes down tonight with that wind still there, there will be a wind chill. Uh, temperatures 50 degrees, Bernie Sage 53, Helotus 55 at Port SA. We've got mid 50s for the most part here in Bexar County, 56 in Tarpley, 57 out west in Hondo. In the forecast high temperatures, as we mentioned, low 60s. Here across uh, the central part of the viewing area, you will find some mid 60s as you go west and some pretty good weather over the weekend too. It warms up. We may get temperatures near 80 by next week before a cold front moves in. We're going to talk about that forecast and what it means for rain chances coming up here in. People who eat or drink more foods with a certain type of antioxidant may be less likely to develop Alzheimer's dementia years later. As ABC's Andrew Dimebart explains, that antioxidant is found in nearly all fruits and vegetables, as well as tea. Researchers at Rush University of Chicago followed 921 people over the age of 81 for six years. They asked about certain factors, such as what they ate, level of education, how much physical and mental activity they did. Researchers found that people who consumed the most flavanol per day were 48% less likely to develop Alzheimer's dementia compared to the group that ingested the least amount per day. This study suggests that dietary intake of flavanols may reduce reduce the risk of developing Alzheimer dementia. It also points to the need for confirmation of these findings through other longer studies as well as clinical trials. It is important to note that the study shows an association between dietary flavanols and Alzheimer's risk, but does not prove that flavanols directly cause a reduction in the risk of developing the disease. With the Medical Minute, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News. A city in California's Bay Area is doing a good job of promoting a healthy lifestyle. According to Wallet Hub, San Francisco is the healthiest city. The website says it's considered it considered 43 indicators of good health, including everything from the cost of a medical visit to fruit and vegetable consumption. Seattle came in second, followed by San Diego and Portland. San Antonio, well, we came at 103. The Texas city that ranked the highest was Austin. Wallet Hub says it's the 11th healthiest city in the country. Well, coming to a stage near you is Janet Jackson. How you can score tickets starting today, that's in the spotlight. Hey, Matt Bonner opening up a new business here in San Antonio, and he's also telling us why the Spurs are struggling. That's coming up in a few minutes in sports. And to all my ladies out there, happy Galentine's Day, ladies. How you can score a free Starbucks drink for your favorite gal pal. And your consumer news forward is recalling nearly a quarter million, million vehicles because the vehicles could have problems with the part of the suspension. That issue could cause a crash. The recall covers the Ford Flex Lincoln M. KT and two versions of the Taurus, including one used as a police vehicle. Ford says no accidents have been reported. Rob him, the company behind the viral sensation of the male romper is going out of business. Rob him announced its Kickstarter vision of rompers for men back in 2017. The idea went viral, making headlines and sparking discussions in the fashion community. But the novelty quickly wore off. Rob him announced their decision to shut down in a message to fans. Oh, David, you missed your opportunity. I missed out on that one. Well, anyone celebrating Galentine's Day today, which started as a joke holiday from the TV shows Parks and Recreation, can fuel up at Starbucks. Today, customers using the Starbucks app can take advantage of a buy one, get one free deal on many of its drinks. Right, there's Galentine's Day and then there is Valentine's Day and you are running out of time for a Valentine. But if you're looking for a match online, a new report finds some of the most popular dating apps are sharing information about you with other companies. Uh -oh, our Erica Hernandez explains what experts say you should do to protect your personal data from ending up in the wrong hands. If you're searching for your Valentine online, beware. A report last month found several dating apps are sharing details about your sexuality, religion, and location. Advocacy group Norwegian Consumer Council looked at 10 apps and found that OkCupid, Tinder, and others collectively shared consumers' data with at least 135 companies. Data is the new oil, okay? That's where everybody's making their money. And we're giving up so much 
In a statement to media outlets, the Match Group, which owns OkCupid and Tinder, said it complies with privacy laws and shares only specific user data deemed necessary. Cyber experts say it's impossible to determine where all that data really ends up and recommend you look very closely at any app's privacy consent before you agree to the terms. Try to read the agreement as much as possible, but don't just jump and go, you know, oh, it's okay, I'm safe. No, you're not. Experts say until federal regulators take action, protecting your privacy is in your own hands. We need to start asking more questions. What is being used? You know, how is our data being used? Why? How are you profiting from my data? Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Once again, outside with lagging, I don't know if we can get enough of this. Look at that. That's absolutely fantastic. It's like a light jacket. Hat, sunglasses. So you're losing jackets. You started out with three this oh, morning. So now we're down to like one. It's a constant layering issue. But I noticed that you said there's not a wind chill factor because it's only 50 degrees. It's got to be 49 before we actually have a wind chill. Well, that's factor. true. At least I think so because we're not getting a report from the airport right now. But yeah. you're right. That is yeah. accurate information. That is weather that's 101. That's why I don't have, have a high in there. <laughs> we're not getting the number from the airport right now. It looks like there's some data issues. But the low is 42. We're probably in the mid 50s. Averages are 67 and 44. Records are 86 and 6. 6 was set back in 1899. We talked about that yesterday. That was a really cold year. There was the Arctic outbreak of 1899. Not seeing that this year. We'll talk about the weekend forecast coming up. Uh, Janet Jackson is coming to town, and you can start buying tickets today. The music icon kicking off her Black Diamond World Tour in June in Miami. From there, she will visit major venues across the U.S., and she'll stop here in San Antonio on August 7th. The performances will feature music from her upcoming album of the same name and her 12 previous multi-platinum records. Right now on KSET.com, where you can get tickets to the big show, they went on sale at noon today, so you've got, what, 44 minutes of sales? I wonder how many they've sold already. Probably a lot. A you lot. can get all your info on the website. Just find this story in the entertainment section. Be interesting. But she puts on a pretty good show. I would think so. I've heard good things. Have you? Yeah. You've never seen Jackson? I've never Jackson been, but I've heard well, good things. Here's your opportunity. There it is. Get your tickets. Yeah. Well, tomorrow's a big day, as we know. It's Valentine's Day. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, hey. It's enthusiasm. I like it. Oh, look at you. Uh, here we go. Oh, I remember Box when we'd make Valentine's wow. or classes. And yeah, you huh. all that the candy. Look at all quick. that candy went fast. It does. It's it like doesn't if last David's eating long. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tomorrow, sunny, 60 degrees. Should be really good for Valentine's Day. A little chilly in the morning, a little chilly in the evening if you're going out for dinner tomorrow night. Yeah, you may want a jacket. But uh, today, gorgeous. We got blue skies. All across the board here, 55 degrees of Port SA, 55 stints and 54 Randolph in the north northeasterly wind right now. Pretty consistent there, around 10 miles per hour, gusting a little bit higher than that in spots. Uh, satellite picture shows there is a cloud deck, but it's starting to go away now. So uh, some of our northeastern counties did see a few of those clouds. And it's not going to be a problem anymore. Everybody's going to see sunny skies now in those temperatures. Not too bad. They're a little on the cool side. 50 degrees right now in Fredericksburg, 57 in Uvalde, 59 Carrizo Springs, 56 in Kennedy. And here around Bear County, mid-50s for the most part. Again, we're not getting that report from the airport, but likely somewhere around 54, 55 degrees there. And as we look at the wind gusts, uh, there's still some out there. And the winds haven't been horrible, but we are seeing some gusts up over 20 miles per hour. We'll probably see that uh, going into this afternoon and this evening as well. And here's the big picture across the state. Still a little bit of snow up there across the Texas Panhandle. They've had quite a stretch here of some wintry weather. And there's that uh, deck of clouds that is uh, starting to erode, but uh, it is off to our north, so it's, we're not going to worry about it. Uh, a lot of cloud cover across the eastern half of the country. This is that storm system that brought us the rain. It's still going. It's fairly strong. We've got some snow on the backside of it uh, and then some severe weather right along that front. And you can clearly see where the front is when we're talking temperatures here. 80s in Florida, but everybody else cooling down quite a bit. And this was a pretty cold air mass. Negative three right now in Minneapolis, negative three in Bismarck. That cold chunk of air, we're kind of just getting a glancing blow here in Texas. So most of it's going to move off to the east. We're feeling a little bit of it, though. It's a little cooler today, uh, even with the sun. And then we'll be watching for another cold front down the line. I think this one is going to bring us another shot of cold air, but that won't be until next week. So 
Here's how it times out. We'll get some 60s on Saturday, probably 70s on Sunday. So the weekend's pretty warm. Moisture starts to return. And by Monday, we're talking 80s, potentially, in spots. Uh, even here in San Antonio, we could be in the upper 70s. That front comes through right now. We're thinking sometime during the day on Tuesday. And then by Wednesday, we're looking at temperatures back in the 40s and 50s. For high temperatures, cloudy skies, chance of rain. So it does change again next week, but we'll get some good days between now and then. 60 degrees, breezy, sunny today. Northerly winds 5 to 15, but they will gust higher than that. Temperatures fall off sharply tonight. 35 tomorrow morning, 60 on your Valentine's Day, 66 Saturday, 75 Sunday. More clouds Monday for sure, and then some chances of rain there Tuesday into Wednesday. Oh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> I know you guys are excited. I know because it reminds me of elementary school. You make the valentines, with, and then you make the boxes. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you pass out the little candies with? And everyone gets one. Oh, my daughter's super excited about that part. See, yeah. yeah did, did you pass out the little candies with? I love you on them or whatever. Oh yeah, and if I had a crush on a boy, I gave him my favorite oh, one. Like you get. Well, as little boys, we did the same thing. We gave the, you know, I love you to the cutest girl <laughs> in the classroom or yeah. something. So. And then you yeah. count your your cards after. Yeah. Now you can't do that. Everyone yeah. has to. Do you have sports? I do have sports. <laughs> okay, I just wonder because so, we talk Valentine's Day all day. I guess. You wanted the Astros to answer questions. Yeah. Well, Jose Altuve was cornered in the locker room, I bet, and he had to answer some questions today. Plus, in soccer, SAFC faced FC Dallas last night. Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't send up the video. Oops. Hey, we've got some late-breaking news just into the KSET 12 newsroom involving the collective bargaining agreement between the city and the San Antonio Professional Firefighters Association. Now, according to a release sent by the Firefighters Union, they have finalized their agreement with the city and we check with the city and through a spokesperson, they tell us they have not received the agreement yet, but once they do, they will respond. If the agreement is accepted, this would mark the end of a years long, very contentious battle between the city and fire union. We will have the latest on our later newscast and on KSAT.com. I'm just want to ask for, uh, you know, the world, the baseball world, you know, to forgive them for the mistakes that they've made. Houston Astros new skipper Dusty Baker is taking part in the team's damage control in big board sports. Before pitchers and catchers hit the field in West Palm Beach, Florida today, the Houston Astros addressed the team's sign stealing scheme in 2017. Despite using a camera in center field to steal signs in real time, the Astros still needed seven games to win the ALCS and seven to win the World Series. We cannot change the actions of the past, but we are fully committed and moving forward in the right way. At that meeting last night, the players showed you know, tremendous uh, remorse and sorrow and, and embarrassment for their families, their organization, uh, the city of Houston, and for baseball. I'm not going to say to you that it was, it was good, it was wrong. You know, the, we feel bad, uh, we feel remorse, like I said, the impact in our fans, the impact in the game. Um, we're apologizing because we broke the rules. But isn't sign stealing a distinct advantage for the hitter, so it doesn't it automatically impact competition? It, it, it could possibly do that, it could possibly not. In response to the Yankees crying foul, Crane said that this did not impact the game. San Antonio FC played a friendly against FC Dallas, and that's Central Catholic's Jose Gallegos starting before his playoff game today for the Buttons. 67th minute, no score until Connor Maloney gets the penalty kick to go. It's 1-0 SAFC. Five minutes later, Gallegos on the drive fakes his first attempt, then fires into the net to give SFC a 2-0 lead. But FC Dallas scores three unanswered to win at Toyota Field, 3-2. I thought it was um, a lot of positives. I thought uh, there was a number of moments in the game. We made it very, very difficult for a very, very good FC Dallas team. I think the fans uh, saw a little bit of a taste of our team identity. Um, and hopefully the fans are, are very excited to, to see what lies ahead. And how about that? Jose Gallegos goes to Central Catholic High School. He's playing a awesome. high school playoff game wow. today, and then he played in that that's match good. last night. That's pretty awesome. Isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so, okay, I'm, I'm 
happier now. Okay, the there you go. <laughs> but you know what? This is going to be just a long season. Wait till they go to New York. Oh, yeah. Or wait till they go to L.A. and face oh, the, yeah. the Dodger media and the New York media. Yep. Ooh, better tighten things down because it's going to get worse before it gets better. Hang in there, Astros. All right. But speaking of great, Mike and Fiona, they got no problems. They don't steal signs or anything. They just eat good food. And, <laughs> we, just, and we just steal the food before the segment. Oh. 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 And in fact, we're going to help all those out there steal the hearts of the one you love. Today. Yes, and look your best, gentlemen. <laughs> Ashley Driver from the Boardroom Salon is here, and she's going to tell the guys how to get nice and print and everything. But you've got something special, right? We do. We have a huge giveaway going on on our Facebook page. So all you have to do is go on Facebook, uh, log in at the Boardroom Salon, Make a comment about today's show and tag a friend, and you're entered to win one of five $100 gift cards to the boardroom. Wow, make a comment about the show. That scares me a little bit. So anyway, thank you, Ashley. We're going to be course. talking more with her a little bit later on. And sweets for your sweet. Dario oh. Orlano from Romelia's Bakery is here. And look at these incredible creations. Oh, my goodness. Can't wait to try these. Hey, you want to go out for a little, uh, little dinner, special dinner, some cocktails and everything? How about La Familia Cortez restaurants? Yes, we are going to tell you about an intimate dinner that you can have at the mariachi bar over at Mi Tierra, where you have a preset menu, drinks, that yummy dessert, Ooh. so we'll tell you all about that. Can't forget about the kids. We have got some great Valentine boxes to make. The folks from Michael's are here. These are simple. These are so much fun to do. And big question is, mm -hmm. how do you impress your special Valentine? Mm -hmm. Is it with chocolates? Mm -hmm. Is it with sweets? Mm -hmm. Is it getting a close shave? Is it with song? Poetry. <laughs> hmm. Let us know at SA Live KSAT and you may see your answer on the show. That and a whole lot more coming up.